by the one and only Andy van der Voort. Applause. <laughs> first talk is about Scrum, Kanban, how about both. So Andy will talk today about how Kanban can enrich Scrum uh, and guide him for truth. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think 
that's quite so good. Um, it is good. Uh, trust is a thing that works both well ways. You cannot expect somebody to trust you without trusting them. Without those, <coughs> we'll talk a bit more about trust uh, in a few minutes. I know the next one. Scrum involves a lot of administration. True? Not true. Ah, <laughs> feel nice and awake now, yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, that's, that's actually very uninformed. Nice. It's not true. <laughs> eh? um, so, good stuff, guys. Eh? Um, what happens a lot eh, is that if management doesn't trust the team, they will try to control it. They will try to get a grip. And if they don't think you have a grip, they will try to get a grip on you. And that's where things usually go wrong. That's where administration uh, appears, that's where uh, management reporting appears, and that's uh, where the whole things go wrong. And so, <coughs> uh, it should not be. Scrum doesn't know any administration. Sure, it doesn't mean so, but it doesn't exist within the Scrum framework. Plus one, Kanban relies heavily on metrics and discipline. True or true? So, uh, I see you guys are awake now, uh, so do I, so um, let's uh, please roll back the changes to the room <laughs> and uh, put the chairs back approximately where you found them. Trust, you don't dare to be uh, 
purpose. So that's why it's important for management to trust the team and the team to trust management. And also the team members to trust each other, of course, and the stakeholders and everybody uh, around them. If there's no trust, there will be no uh, good scrum. That's a shame. But how do we do this? Well, this is where the five values for uh, Scrum come in play. The first one is courage. Somebody has to be the first one to trust them. <coughs> that takes us. And if you uh, have management that doesn't trust you, you don't trust management. Can you control your management? No. Can you control yourself? Yes. So be the one that has courage and makes the first step. Trust the guy who's asking for you. And they do it for a reason, you just don't bother with it. The okay. uh, second one is uh, focus. Uh, don't do 50 things at the same time. Uh, there is a misconception about the word focus. A lot of people think that I'm really focused with, oh, let me just put this away and say that. And um, uh, there's a really, um, uh, I'm focused on what I'm doing, so I do greater focus. Uh, but maybe you're focusing on things at the same time. And now you're really focused. <clears throat> focus is about doing the right thing at the right time. So work on the most important thing. Okay. And there was commitment. So I'm not one of the lot of misconceptions. A lot of people think that commitment means that you go to sprint planning and you pick five stories from the backlog and then you pick yourself on the finger inside of the blood and you do these five stories. <coughs> Sorry. That is how commitment means. Commitment means uh, you do your utmost, your very best to do these things. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that you will actually finish them because you don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a complex situation. You never really truly know if it's going to work. But you're going to try your best. The respect uh, is um, about uh, respecting each other, trusting that people are good at what they do. If they were not good at what they do, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be paid a nice amount per hour to be in your life. And so, respect each other. Respect your manager, respect your stakeholder, respect your uh, doorman, everybody. Just be each other with respect. The last one is openness. And being open about our work. This is where also the transparency is generated. Yeah? <clears throat> Just be open about what you do. About what you do. Yeah, so be open, be transparent. But how do you do this? Yeah, uh, Scrum says some stuff about this. Uh, it says uh, you have to be transparent by the uh, paperwork. The definition of done needs to be uh, defined and then it's so, you have your uh, Scrum events at the same time every day or every two weeks or whatever, so people know when you are meeting, uh, it's transparent. But Scrum doesn't say how to be transparent about your sprint backlog. They do say you have to be, and you have to respect and adapt if you take Scrum. And that's difficult. And um, there's a wise man who has said all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can, can make a burnout chart, you can make a, you can have a strong board, you can have a Jira, you can have post you can have film lanes, all of these things you can use to be transparent about your sprint backlog. Are they wrong? No. Uh, they can be uh, can, they can be used very well. And they can also be used very wrong. It depends on the situation and your trust level if you have the organization. Um, um, oh. Sorry. Um, another one is uh, Kanban. Kanban is Japanese for a visual sign. Basically, the board that explains you, that shows you what's going on. Uh, you may not, um, sorry, Kanban uh, focuses on creating flow. Uh, flow is uh, generating uh, stuff, uh, getting it through the process <coughs> as soon as, uh, as possible. I come along from Lean, and it was uh, the first use in uh, <coughs> production factories. Uh, 
and you also you do this too. It's a little, it's a very burden to go to the car or whatever uh, to see where it was in the process and to visualize how long it was on the stage. And um, also, we also try to use it in IT very successfully, uh, if I may say so. We use a couple of core practices. And the first core practice is to uh, visualize, visualize your workflow. It just make it visible what's going on. Uh, and then limit your uh, work in progress. Uh, if you do uh, not so much at the same time, then you generate uh, focus and you do your kit. If you do one thing at a time, it goes a lot faster than when you do two things at a time. And so in the time that you do two things at a time, you can also do three things, three things one thing at a time, often. Of course, there's a lot of uh, uh, research about this, I don't know about you with uh, that, but it's actually uh, true. And you also want to make your policies explicit. Uh, you want to be transparent. And what if you do, what quality you want to uh, show, etc. We'll look at it in a minute. <coughs> you also want to actively manage your items in progress and inspect and adapt your workflow. Right. Well, you guys probably have seen the board like this before, eh? this is the Scrum board. Uh, as we use it um, often, uh, uh, we have uh, to do, do it done. And we have like a story and a swing lane and all kinds of stickies. Uh, and we have analysis stickies and we have testing stickies and territorial stickies and, uh, and stuff. Who here has worked with a strong board like this? Yeah. And the, your entire workflow here is this. So you're doing something. Uh, uh, but when are you starting developing, when are you starting to code, you don't really know, you just wing it. And so when people walking by in the room don't really know exactly what's going on. And you also don't know exactly what's going on, you have to put context. What you can also do, what you can also do is put them in sequence. Those are different color stickies that you just had. And when you have to verify this like this, it's in progress. And uh, with the phone means basically <coughs> next to the list. <coughs> but isn't that wonderful? I hear you say. I saw some, uh, some, some looks like, mm -hmm. I've seen it uh, before. Actually, no. A waterfall used to be in the, the day, you go to a whole, you can grab a whole system or a whole subsystem, you analyze the whole thing and you build the whole thing. And we want to get away from it, and we see now the ages that people become like a little bit anxious when we see these different phases. But it's not really that scary. We still do it. If you look at our uh, scroll board, then, uh, what you often see is that first the analysis for, the, for part A of the story is done, and then the content for part A of the story is done, and then the testing for part A of the story is done, and then we move on to B. Uh, uh, can you see it? No. What does happen? Yes. So basically, you can know, we do a tiny little waterfall here as well if you want to call it waterfall. You cannot escape uh, doing things in sequence. That's just how it works. You cannot deploy something before you build. For instance. You can? Ah, okay. Well, I think we're tired. If you can deploy something before it's built and we don't need to build it, we can just deploy it. That's right. Uh, all right, then what, um, uh, like I said, some people get a bit anxious when they see uh, uh, the MI build test. Uh, so it's, it's better to use a little bit less uh, uh, traditional words for the comments. Just get a few. Uh, because we're a, a, a multifunctional team, uh, we have uh, people that are skilled with uh, more than just developing or more than just testing. <coughs> Let's be fair, these days testing is 90% uh, development anyway, so, um, yeah. so choose something that's less traditional. It will help you. It will also help discussing with others. Now, when you see 
see here is evaluating the last column before release. You see a lot of cities. Who do you think this is a problem? Yeah? So it looks like uh, the tester is working hard, doesn't it? Yeah. And also, what happened to the tester is the developer finishes something and shows it into the evaluating uh, column, regardless of whether or not the tester is actually doing something. And so, we created a push mechanism. Doesn't help. It's better to introduce a pool mechanism. But when there's things like this, you can actually see that the tester has three things done already. They just weren't released yet. Uh, um, it's actually doing one thing, and, and not that it's, it's not started yet on working on it. It's basically the same, but just by uh, introducing a pool system, you can actually make it, uh, or help the tester, or help the developer, or help whoever to just pull something that they're actually working on. You get, um, the the horn core printer core um, uh, principles is to limit your work in progress. Uh, if you have 25 things in development uh, and nothing in testing, and you start to introduce uh, inventory. Uh, inventory is one of the leading waste types. Inventory usually is not good because whatever has done before is <coughs> half, half forgotten by the time you actually start working on it. So you want to limit what you do and make it as small a number as possible. Um, I've seen uh, examples where the width limit of each of these columns was one. And that's, but that's very restricting. Uh, that is uh, uh, very hard. And we make it as small as you can. And uh, the root limit goes for both of these. Yeah? It goes for building. Who can decide that the root limit has to go up? Completely or construction? Who can decide that? Uh, the, team. the team. Yeah, the team can, uh, can decide if you want to change the root limit. <coughs> But uh, <coughs> um, uh, this is what this can contain. Uh, this is one of the things where come um, uh, on requires uh, to be strong minded, strong will. Uh, because it's very easy to say, okay, now well, oh, I can't develop anything right now, so I'm just going to increase my work limit and then I can develop some more. Ah, nice. And with that, it's purpose. Then you can just throw uh, not produce your data. Uh, what you also want to do is make policies explicit. Uh, uh, put them on the board. Uh, we have uh, all our definitions are done for um, uh, Scrum. Uh, uh, um, uh, make it explicit for each of the forms. And uh, when is it okay to move on to the next? When is discovering them, when is building them. It helps create transparency. And you also, you also know what has been done at least when you pull it into your uh, line. Always inspect and adapt your workflow because the company is also um, an agile way of working, it also uh, requires. Bit of respect to that. So do that regularly. And you can do that by using your service level expectation. We all know the service level agreement right, from the past. Service level agreement is that somebody somewhere decided that you need to <coughs> finish your work within two days after it's been reported, if it's a high priority bug. Uh, without knowing if you actually can do it. And the service level expectation is uh, created from uh, the past, the past experience. I can say in the past, uh, 85 of our work items uh, was finished within eight days. You can say that, they mentioned it. What you see here, by the way, is the cycle time. And so the eight days is uh, the average of the cycle time of the work items. This is one of the metrics of uh, common. 
Uh, so if you want to know how long it takes uh, you to do something, you need to be disciplined to actually mark somewhere to start a coordinate and where it went from next to discovery. Um, and also you need to mark where it leaves the column. So you can calculate the time. But if you're uh, more disciplined, more uh, a little bit of administration, more and so on. But it's very valuable uh, because um, um, uh, if you make a change and you think it's an improvement, uh, you can start seeing what the effects are. Uh, if you reduce your rate limit, for instance, or if you increase your rate limit, you will see an effect on your average cycle time. And you will see uh, an effect on the line here. And so if the line goes up, it's probably not an improvement, just a change. <coughs> you may want to reconsider if you want to roll back your change. If you run it down, that's fine. Yeah, this is this is some uh, some uh, uh, queuing theory. It's complicated. Uh, I'm trying to grasp it myself. Uh, uh, like I said I. Um, in touch with this, and I really wanted to share it with you guys because it's a very interesting uh, material. Uh, uh, little of all, uh, Mr. John Little, uh, who came up as part of queuing theory uh, with Little's law. And he says that average cycle time is your uh, uh, average will be progress divided by your average throughput. And throughput <coughs> is uh, uh, how much. How many items do you produce a day? Uh, for instance, on this day, the throughput is 3, the throughput is 2. So you can calculate your average cycle time. Uh, so if you increase your work in progress and you, you still have the same throughput, your cycle time will increase. Uh, or it, probably also your throughput will go down, so it will probably too much. Right, yeah, um, so this is how you can inspect your data. You have some other metrics that you can use, some other um, charts that you can use, but I won't show them all to you because I only have 45 minutes. What you do need to do is actively manage your work items in progress. And this is a uh, situation could be like halfway through, I speak to halfway through, you know, just a little bit of And we see here, and how it looks like now. Huh? So we have um, uh, three in the complete for building, nothing in doing. Huh? We have three, so you cannot start doing anything. Uh, you see here, uh, there's some stuff uh, in validating, uh, also one complete. So you can't really, and this one you cannot pull into the process. Into the process. What do you do? Does anybody have an idea what to do here? Yeah, I'll tell you that it would be a great uh, thing to do. Uh, or even better, how uh, producing this. Uh, always work on the common board from the right to the left. Because if you create space here, then the whole system can start creating flow. And so uh, if you're like, uh, hmm, I just finished my task, what shall I do? Start looking there. And then if there's nothing there that you can actually do, that's fine, you don't move to that. If, if you run any uh, other options, sit next to a body, help them, or learn from them, so next time you can do it. So, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about Scrum, we talked a little bit about uh, Countdown. Sorry? Um, so let's see how they can work together. Uh, uh, one thing to know about Scrum and Kanban is complete Scrum. Everything about Scrum. And also everything about Kanban. So there's nothing that disappears from Scrum. Everything you could have a, sc a sprint plan. Uh, um, 
you could uh, normally if you were spin diving is across the spin goal with your prototype. And it's not so much about which five stories do I pick and just the top ones and it doesn't matter if they are connected to each other. It helps you to create a spin goal so you can focus on taking the goal. As the disabled will also be happier when they can actually do something, uh, achieve the goal rather than the five loose pieces of concept. And so you cross the goal. Uh, and then um, in here you put uh, some things. There's the stuff that you're going to work on first in this thing. And it's also limited uh, how much work you uh, can put in this column. So uh, just put the uh, limits in there and then start working. This means that sprint then can be a lot shorter. So that would be nice. And you don't need to go through your whole sprint then. Well, there's the things that you can't do first. And what do you think uh, when you look at this SLD? What would be a good sprint length? Sprint Anybody have an idea? How many weeks? Two, yeah, because if you have uh, one, yeah, but if you have one, then um, you will not have 85% of your work completed within a sprint. And if, the, if the SLD would be 85% finished within 12 days, then I would suggest using the three weeks. Just a uh, chance to actually finish stuff. And then it's not. We do it every day at the same time. And it's nice and transparent. And you will inspect uh, your work in progress. Um, we see a lot of uh, teams is that uh, they just have the traditional three questions from back in the day. Uh, um, yesterday I did this and I had a meeting and I talked to my uh, daughter and uh, whatever. <coughs> Today I'm going to do this and I have no impediments. Uh, that's not what you do in this, uh, this setup. And you, you just look at your Kanban at your board and you start actively managing your work in progress. You see what would be a wise strategy. Do we actually need to change to impediments because of something high priority or something? Uh, it could also be the one where the product owner um, introduces new stuff to put into the um, next column uh, because um, room can also be. And just also look at the aging of the work items. If there is a, a work item that has been in the uh, first column for six days, and you can look at the, the report that will probably be time you need to spend in the product. It could very well be that normally you actually spend the maximum two days in a column and you can already predict that it's going to uh, be late. It will help you adapt immediately. Yeah, and you look at the throughput, it is always nice to look at it. If you did, yeah, uh, celebrate your successes. And the sprint review. Uh, where you share with the stakeholders what you did uh, uh, and how it went. Uh, so don't only show what you delivered, uh, it's not a demo. It's also discussing how things go, what you can expect. Uh, um, uh, for the certain level of expectation, you can say, no, guys, um, uh, we see that it's not up. We need to change something, or we need to change the sprint length, or whatever. Uh, uh, we need to make things smaller. Uh, could be uh, anything, but be open about it. Also, uh, communicate changing the policies. You know, if you change the definition of them, you would um, tell the stakeholders about it, and it goes for the whole set of policies. And show your metrics and charts. Be open about everything. During retrospective, um, uh, do your usual stuff, talk to each other about how you cooperate and um, how it could be improved or how it's gone very well. Uh, uh, but also have a look at your workflow. Uh, is, are we still doing these uh, things the right time? 
and or uh, we are maybe you are in a, a multiple CI/CD type of situation yet. You're finding that having only uh, done with uh, testing and then release column is not really working for you because you can release only once every two weeks or whatever. And maybe you need to introduce a new DOM column so you can actually move it out. But it could be anything. Yeah? Uh, look at this. Look at the policies, are they still working? Are they too, too, too restrictive or whatever? Uh, just look at the policies. Look at the server level, server level expectation because that says something about the effect of your previous uh, changes, your improvements. And look at your repairs. Um, okay, to summarize uh, again, back to the, um, uh, to the uh, value of Scrum. Um, which of these values do you think have been improved or, uh, uh, connect or are connected to common, if you want? Definitely openness. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, everybody can see a lot better what your current situation is. It's always visible for everybody. Delicious. And you don't need to write any reports anymore about your progress. Somebody wants to say, see um, a daily status report. Maybe send them a picture or just um, tell them to, to walk by if they need a report. And that's it for the house. Uh, and that re reduces paperwork. Who doesn't want that? Any other values that are affected uh, by this? Focus. Focus, yes. And by reducing your work limit, uh, you are automatically increasing your focus. Don't do five things at the same time. Always do the most valuable thing because that's the thing that the majority of us put in the next column. And so there are two. The other two are the most, uh, the most effective. Also, courage, yeah, because it, uh, if you're in a situation where you are not very safe about uh, whether or not you should put all this information on board for everybody to see, uh, it takes courage to do so. Uh, but it will really help you, and not only with communication with the outside world, uh, but also for yourself, because you get a lot better grip on the situation. And if you have a grip in a situation and you show that you have a grip in a situation, people will start trusting that you are in it and don't really want to try to enforce it anymore. And so it generates trust. Now we're back to the kid. It generates trust, but uh, uh, it can be transparent. Sometimes you need to start being transparent before you can actually start building those, those things kind of interact. But you need it to be able to work uh, in a bigger way. Yes? So, Scrum, Kanban, yes, definitely do both. They enrich each other, and it's not an or or situation. Any questions? Oh yeah, it's also okay. <laughs>